Okay, so again, it's more likely that you're not going to see the W-2 income, but the income coming from uh, basically these other sources. Let's bring the income down below a threshold so so that now it might be taxed at a lower rate. So let's say the let's say the income was only like like uh, twenty like twenty thousand or something. So let's go back on over and let's imagine that that the wages income. I'm going to bring that down from here and let's say they just got some money from a pension plan or something like that. So we're going to say pension income and I'm going to say this is 1099 R that they got and it's going to be a normal distribution. And let's say that they got like like 20, let's say, let's say 15,000 here, taxable amount 15,000. And then on the Social Security, let's bump up the Social Security a bit. Social Security benefits, let's say they got uh, uh, 10,000 Social Security. Okay, let's make it 5,000, 5,000. Okay, make up your mind, make up your mind. Okay, that's what I want to do. So now I'm still looking at the form 1040, although the 1040 SR would be like the form typically used over the threshold of 65. So we've got single, we've got the uh, born before January, whatever. And then down here, now we've got our income coming from the pension and annuities and the social security benefits, none of it's being taxable, right? And you can look at the worksheet right here that's because they're below the threshold and you can get an idea of of the income thresholds but that's going to be and i won't get into the weeds on that but you can get into the weeds on that to see the calculation on how the worksheet is being put together so if i was to mirror that on this side i'd have to say okay income no w-2 income they got an a pension income that i said was fifteen thousand, i think and then they've got the social security of what did i say five thousand but now it's it's none of it's taxable. They're not taxed at the 85%. So I'm just going to rely on the software to say that zero of that is taxable. And that's putting the zero down there. So that gets me the, the 15 up top. So the 15, 15 brings it down to the to the, three, the 300. So the 300 and so on. So I won't go from there. Now, now let's, let's increase this a little bit. Let's bring it up to like 25,000. Let's say this was at... To do pension 25 25,000 let's say Mui B to the N so now a portion of it is being taxed right 1,250 so now we're at 1250 divided by 5,000 it's pulling in 25% right let's pull it up let's pull it up to uh, let's pull this amount up to like 30,000 30,000, 30,000, and see what that does. Going back on over, now half of it, right? So it's going to be 2500 divided by 5,000. Uh, what? K the heck paso divided by 5,000, 50%. And now let's bring it up to, I, I think it's like 34,000, 34. 4,000 and so now it's still at 50% let's bring it to to uh, f to actually I didn't do it here 34,000 34,000 so now it's it's getting pretty close pretty close though to 100 uh, to the full amount here 85% so now we're at uh, 4250 divided by 5,000 85% so it's a pretty low threshold still, right? And then, and then if I brought this as high as I wanted to, it should stick at that 85% of the income, right? If I brought this up to 100,000, 100,000, we're still st sticking there. And so that's the general kind of curve that you want in your mind. So when you explain it to people, you're like, yeah, it's, you're probably gonna have to include an income like 85% unless your income is relatively low so it's four two five zero divided by divided by five thousand now if they were a married couple up to married couple and foreign man turning tricks oh, good. then of course you can uh you might have social security from two people right so then i could go back on over and say now they're married filing joint and then on the income side let's say we had 
the social security benefits 5,000 from one spouse and 5,000 from another spouse, right? And so now that's gonna be pulling in to the, the uh, box of 10,000 and eight, uh, 85% is being taxed at this point. If they were married, then you can bring the threshold. The thresholds will be a little bit different to determine how much will be taxable. So if I went back on over and I went to my pension uh, income and I bring this da down once again to 30,000, 30,000, and I go back on over and say, okay, now only 1,500 is being taxable. 1,500 divided by 10,000, 15%. The thresholds are a little bit different as you would expect for a married filing joint. If I bring it up to like 40,000, 40,000, then now we're at the 5850 divided by 10,000, which is 58%. And then if I bring it up to like, I think it's like 44,000, 44,000, and pull it on over. Pull it on over. Now we're at that that 85%, eight five. So it's still a fairly low threshold, but obviously the threshold differs for married filing joint versus the single threshold. So there's the general the general idea that you want to have in your mind uh, with regards to the social security. So remember that you also kind of you probably want to get a, a general concept of what the social security is doing. You're pulling it in from the W two when you pay it. It's social security or payroll taxes different than basically the income taxes. You're paying it in with your payroll taxes or with uh, your, your, your self-employment taxes. And the amount that you pay in is gonna be uh, causing the amount or in, contribute to the calculation of how much benefits you're gonna get in retirement. And then when you get the benefits in retirement, it possibly could be included in income and generally will be included in income up to like 85% unless your income is taxable income, you know, is relatively low. That's kind of the scenario you might want to have.